we have a hell of an episode this week. Uh, Spencer, thanks for coming on last week. That was fun. It was great to kick it off with a uh, two-time champ. Uh, another Iowa legend this week, Peter Jock. Nate, what do you think? How, how, did, how did things go today? That's, they went great. Uh, Pete's always kind of been in contact with us ever since he's been in Iowa and still to this day, he's always been polite and he's willing to hop on the podcast. We have some great stories of him being the number one recruit in the country, uh, coming to Iowa, his relationship with Fran, some of the current players, his experience at Iowa, then him heading overseas. I mean, Pete's just a great dude, solid guy, obviously knowledgeable about the game of basketball, man. Great podcast, though. Yeah, he has, he has just such a cool story. And really, if, if we, you know, if he had more time and, and we could really dive into things, there's so much to talk about with, you know, injury recovery and just even his story coming from Sudan and, and all that, which we weren't even able to even get to. But, man, he's got cool stories and, and just always had an aura to him, you know, the conversations that we got into about Jordan Bohannon and Kreener getting, you know, almost like fangirling. And then, uh, you know, the stories of like walking into a venue and just kind of lighting up the whole room. Uh, it definitely fun. He, he brings an energy, always had the, the, the swagger and, and uh, just, just brings it every time. For sure. The dude was a competitor, uh, always stood up to the competition. He was, uh, they didn't expect him to win the three point contest. I knew for sure he was going to win that three point contest. And I was also cool that he took over a snapshot during that time, senior year. And uh, sure enough, he won it. Uh, Man, just excited for everybody to kind of listen to this episode. Yeah, man, we're, we're going to keep gaining momentum, keep bringing on uh, more guests and and, and more uh, talk more relevant news. I mean, we're just shaking the dust off at this point, shaking off the rust. So we're, it's only going to get better from here. That's right. I feel a lot better. about. I mean, no offense to Spencer Lee, but we're, we're basketball guys. We knew a little bit more about Pete. Uh, so it was fun to kind of dive into his career. Dang, I want to show my Hawkeye set up. Well, people watch it on YouTube little podcast today in the Hawkeye man cave. There's a nice bush light sign we had at the party. That's my Hawkeye painting up there too. If anyone's yeah. Kidding. The painting looks good too. Yeah. We gotta, we gotta encourage more people to watch on YouTube. We have video now. That's something that's new this year. Um, you, this is almost maybe built more for a YouTube show. So definitely give us a like and subscribe on YouTube. There's going to be a lot of uh, full length episodes on there. Yeah, please. We appreciate everyone listening. Uh, we want to say thank you to our producer and editors our sponsor, uh, Cookies Barbecue Sauce, uh, Jason, for helping us edit the podcast, and Jay Wiley, a shout out to Jay Wiley as well. I mean, without you guys, we're, we wouldn't be able to make this YouTube uh, um, situation happen. So we appreciate your help and everyone listening. So if you could give us, give yourself five, 10 seconds, go like, subscribe to our YouTube or our podcast channel. It really helps us out. Uh, we're glad to get back on this podcast and uh, keep moving forward. Before we get started, we got to give a big shout out and a big thank you to Cookies Barbecue. They are the sauce that America loves to eat, and they're the sauce that needs to be on every Iowan's table. Cookies Barbecue sauces and seasonings make all of your favorite foods taste a little bit better. Find them at your local grocery store and at cookiesbarbecue.com. They're getting more tech savvy, and you can buy things online now. So go to cookiesbarbecue.com or your local grocery store. Uh, remember, smart cookies use cookies. That's right. Uh, and here's a little side note. Uh, once our page gets to 250 followers on Instagram, I am going to see how long I can hold my breath in cookies, barbecue sauce. I, you, you texted me that yesterday. I laughed out loud. I'm wondering how you're going to pull that off. Even we'll find a way. All we need is more, uh, 160. No, we're at 90. So we almost need 160 more followers to make this happen. So people go follow our page at the Iowa chill show on Instagram. And once we get the 250, you're going to see my head and a bucket of cookies, barbecue sauce. And we're going to see how long I can hold my breath. <laughs> Sounds good. All right, let's get into this thing. All right, folks, welcome back to the Iowa Chill Show. It's our second episode. Last week we had Spencer Leon. We have another Hawkeye legend on today. But before we get into our guest, Bryce, how are you doing today? Doing great. I'm just glad that we got this show going again. Like we said last time, we, we took a break. That there was just too much going on in 2020. So we're coming in hot. Two great guests. Pumped to talk about Peter. I think uh, you know we got some funny, funny personal stories. Peter's obviously got you know a crazy story himself. So this this should be fun. Former Mr. Iowa basketball first team All Big Ten. Scored 1,508 points at the University of Iowa and is the NCAA three-point champion on his senior season. Please welcome our guest, Peter Jock. Peter, how are we doing today? I'm good, man. How you guys doing? Good. Where, where are you at right now? You're in a I'm, apartment I'm in over Spain. in – Yeah, over in Spain? Yeah. Yeah, I'm in Spain, man. It's crazy how, over here, too. How's the weather? Oh, the weather's beautiful where I'm at. 
It's like it's been in the seventies. It's like it's hot all year, so it's it's beautiful out here. But it's just like the pandemic, everything is locked down, so it's not like oh, yeah. yeah. pretty strict over there. Yeah, pretty much. You got to wear a mask or you get fined, pretty much. So yeah, yeah. no snow pretty though, strict. right? Yeah, no. I've been I've seen the snow when we travel to play a team up in the I think in the south. Okay, I can't. No, not in the south. In the, yeah, in the south. I think. Yeah, I don't know. I can't remember. Yeah. But I've seen snow one time since I've been here. Okay, cool. Well, Pete, we're pumped that you're joining us today. It's nine o'clock over there right now. It's two o'clock our central time here in Iowa. So thanks for being flexible getting into this. So Pete, we're oh. going to start off back. We're going to go all the way back to the day we can kind of remember when you first came about the scene in basketball. If I'm correct, you were the number one ranked recruit in the nation at one point, right? Yes, maybe sir. Was, yeah. What was that, like ninth grade, freshman year, eighth grade maybe? Yeah, it was uh, in the eighth grade, freshman year. Yeah, you're the next biggest thing towards Harrison Barnes. Do you want to talk talk a little bit about that? You're getting recruited by KU, North Carolina, Duke. Tell us a little bit about that experience and you come to the top of the ranks. Uh, man, it was great. It was a great experience. Um, I mean, I really didn't start playing basketball until fifth grade. And a lot of people, I really know the reason why I started playing basketball what, uh, and what so. So once uh, in seventh grade, when I started taking the series, um, I started learning how to shoot. And because I was really taller than everybody. And then once I learned how to shoot, um, I started getting a lot of attention. And we went, I remember my team was pretty good, actually, with the all I would attack. And um, we were winning a lot of tournaments. We was getting a lot of attention as a team and then me uh, individually. And, um, and I remember when it came out that I was ranked number one player in the country. And uh, my first my first offer was, uh, I think it was Marquette or Illinois in eighth grade. But I had like five offers in eighth grade. And um it, it was it was great. I was um, I was excited, but then it, uh, it was also uh, it was a lot, you know, coming into high school as a freshman and uh, getting all this attention and uh, uh, playing varsity my freshman year, and um, you know it was it was a great time. But at the same time, I had a humbling a humbling situation where when I got hurt, and I will probably get back. We'll probably get into that after uh, later on, but. Uh, just getting all those scholarships, man, it, it was great. And uh, you, once you're going through that, uh, going, we once you're going through and stuff like that, you know, you feel like you know your future. Because um, I felt like I knew where I was going to go, and I knew what's going to happen the next and next and all that stuff. But you never know what's going what's going to happen in the future. You just gotta you just gotta control control what you can control at that moment, and just and just uh, let everything handle itself. Do you, you played for Jeff Warner, right? Yeah, and uh, my uh, when I went to Valley, I played for Jeff. Okay. Did you switch over to Valley your, your junior year, your final two seasons from yep. Roosevelt? Yeah. Okay. You want to tell us a little bit about play, what it's like playing for Jeff Horner, what he meant to you and uh, developing your game? Yeah. I mean, playing for Jeff, man, it was great. Um, that's main, one of the, that's one of the main reasons why uh, I switched from Roosevelt to Valley is because, you know, Jeff played college basketball and uh, that was one of my, one of my goals to play in college. And then he also played uh, a professional basketball too. So, um, him, him having uh, having those in his background, his resume. You know, I wanted to go there and play for somebody that is going that's been through what I wanted to go through. And and uh, he was a great man. He was a players' coach. Um, he kept it real, kept it one hundred, no matter what. It didn't, he didn't care about hurting people's feelings. And uh, our, we always had a talk. We always have talks. And um, I mean, he never really. We had a few talks, but he never really said like you should go to Iowa or trying to convince me to go to Iowa, you know, it was what's best for me. And, um, and he gave me a lot of knowledge, uh, what he did, what he learned when he was a freshman in college and all, all the, all the things that he went through, he, he gave me a lot of, a lot of knowledge. And uh, that was a great thing. I was happy to be coached by him. Good. Yeah, you did good. touch on the uh, patella injury and, and mentioned some of the things that, you know, go into that kind of recovery um, was, uh, you know, was that something where you're like, I might not play again. I might have to be done. Um, and then what does that look like from, you know, a mental, you know, obviously that there's physical therapy that goes with that, but what does that look like from your mentality perspective and, and who are the key people that helped you get through that injury and, and back onto the, uh, the national stage? Oh man. Yeah, for sure. I mean, I was, uh, I felt like I was on top of everything. Um, I had like all the scholarships that you said, and, um, I was just playing great basketball and, and then when that happened, you know, it just kind of humbles you because, um, you was, I was a little cocky. I'm not gonna lie. I was cocky. I uh, didn't really listen to a lot of people. And cause I felt like I knew I was just on top of the world. And once that happened, you know, I, I went from the top to the bottom and you know, I just, it, it's a humble experience, but 
I had my family, my head, my family was uh, had me, uh, my family had my back and, you know, I'm a man of faith. And what I learned a lot through the injury was to get closer to God because, you know, everything happened for a reason. And I felt like he was teaching me a lesson that, uh, that you need to humble down, you need to calm down. And, uh, and then also my coaches, you know, my friends and my family, um, they were all there supporting me and then they keep pushing me and telling me I'm going to come back. I'm going to uh, get back to where I was. And I went to a, a physical therapist. Her name was Memory, Memory Elches. And she really helped me out a lot because she was the wife of my uh, high school coach at Roosevelt. And I spent a lot of time with her. And she was an a athlete too. So she kind of knew like what was going on. She talked to me a lot too. And, and you know, just people were supporting me and, and also getting close to God and just knowing that everything's going to be okay. And as long as I control what I can control, and I, that's that's what kept me going. And then my family, you know, they had my back, so I felt like uh, there was nothing to worry about. And I just kept working, kept working, and then came back. So, yeah. Pete, uh, before you committed to Iowa, you have any crazy uh, recruiting stories or some weird stories where you went to some of these visits and it's like, wow, you know, like that stuck, that stood out, or that's like, holy crap. I guess I went to uh, KU, KU Midnight Madness. Uh, that was that was crazy. Uh, met a lot of different people there, uh, a lot of celebrities, and it was I was just I was just wild of uh, of the fans and all that stuff. It was it was it was a crazy experience for sure. But um, I didn't really go in any other visits besides that. And then actually I went to UCLA too. UCLA was hot. I remember being hot, and I was like, "Whoa, this might be a little too hot for me." <laughs> and yeah, but you know, once I went to um, official visit to Iowa because you know that was the first I think I went to Drake but uh Iowa was the first official visit that I went to and uh pretty much made my decision there but um other uh, other schools I went unofficial and it was cool and everything but I just I just I was uh, Iowa was the one for me so so when you when you do recovery you start having a, a good senior season correct uh, that was the year that you you fully recovered and started to play again yeah, uh, to be honest, what happened? What happened was like I had I had uh, tore my patella tendon my freshman year, in at the night at the end of my freshman year in the summer at a Nike camp, and then I thought it was a tendonitis, so I played through it the whole sophomore year, and it just kept getting worse. So when I got the surgery at in sophomore, I mean at the end of sophomore year, it took me pretty much like I didn't get a hundred percent until I was in college, sophomore in college like gotcha. fully like fully back to myself but uh but during my junior year I was in 100% sure. and then my senior my senior year was the best I felt in high school after after I hurt my knee and that's when I started playing better you know I started getting sure. more for more uh more interest from my other uh, bigger schools too again so yeah and obviously but, coach yeah. McCaffrey stuck through with uh that injury who else kept their scholarship available um I, I can't I can't remember to be honest Cause I didn't really pay attention to all that. Cause I remember, but I just, I remember specifically, um, I remember Kirk, Kirk, uh, Coach Kirk with Iowa, cause he's a friend of my guardian, Mike Nixon. And I remember they kept talking and, you know, he kept coming to watch me and kept talking to me. He kept saying, kept saying, stay positive. You know, we want you. And uh, he stayed through it all, you know, before I got hurt. I remember before it, the funny story is not a lot of people know this, but before I went to Nike camp my freshman year, before I got hurt, I stopped at Iowa City and had a um, a visit with the coaches. And on my way to, to St. Louis, to was I think it was St. Louis. Yeah, on my way to the Nike camp. And uh, I had a great visit with them. And ever since then, you know, they had they kept in contact with me. And then when I got hurt, they kept contact with me throughout the injury and all the process and stuff. And then Coach Kurt was the main one who kept convincing Coach McCaffrey to give me to uh to, you know what I mean to give me a chance and stuff. So and then Coach McCaffrey came and watched me my senior year and he like <clears throat> he saw that I was fully I was coming back and he and then that's when uh yeah that's when the rest is history. Sure. So, so some of that loyalty and, and belief in your recovery and, and what your potential was gonna be had to have been a, a pretty important part of why you chose Iowa in the end. Yeah, uh, my family is all about loyalty, and uh, I remember my brother always telling me how teams recruit you is how they go treat you. So, uh, one, so the way I was recruiting me, he was saying, um, "I'm not going to tell you where to go, but 
just just um, pay attention how they recruit you because once you go there, what if you go there and get hurt again? What are they going to do? You know what I mean? Because once I got hurt my freshman year, a lot of teams took back their scholarships and they say they wanted to see me come back 100% before uh, they offer me again. Sure. So that that's the you know that showed me a lot of a lot of stuff too and uh, and uh, yeah. So from most outside perspective, a lot of people kind of look at Coach McCaffrey obviously through television. He looks like the craziest dude, the red the red brand face. Uh, but from inside sources, he seems like a chill, funny, goofy guy. Can you kind of elaborate on your guys' relationship together and what who really Coach McCaffrey is? Man, Coach, all the all the things that people see on TV with Coach acting crazy, that's not him. You know, that's just a that's just a show trying to get us going and games and stuff. But um, off the court, you know, Coach McCaffrey is a family guy. Uh, he treated us like his sons. And I know, for, especially for me, you know, I remember um, he treated me like one of his sons. Uh, he, he kept everything 100% with me. Um, I remember going to this house. I used to go to this house. And I'm close I'm close with his sons, too, and all three of them. So um, from my experience, he's a great guy, his family guy. Really, like, if you if you get to, like, know him, you know what I mean? Like, he's, he's a great person, man. And uh, – He's not as crazy as people say, you know, uh, or, or see on TV. That's just uh, stuff to get us going, you know what I mean? So, and every great coach, I mean, a lot of great coaches yell just like that too. And uh, it, it pumps us up, pumps us up. So. We had a chance to talk with Jordan last year and he, he elaborated in sort of the same way. And so it's good to hear that's the case. I mean, <laughs> I, I, maybe he needs to get on more interviews like this and, and clear up the record that he's not always red face Fran. He's, he's family Fran too. Yeah, no, nah, no, nah, he's definitely not a red face friend outside the court, so off, like, off the court, so. All right, Pete, we're going to fast forward through your first two years at <laughs> Iowa. We're going to hop on to your junior year. I think it was year 2016. You guys were ranked, what, third in the country of senior Mike Cassell, Utah, Woodbury, and all them. That was a special season. Uh, coming off the big football season from Iowa, and then the basketball pr- program, you started to see, like, a positive momentum, a good turnaround. You kind of want to talk about that season a little bit? Man, that was one of my well, yeah, one of my favorite seasons at Iowa. Um, I remember we had we had you said we had four seniors and they were all great leaders. And I remember we didn't start we didn't start off that well. And but the chemistry is what is what turned us around. And you know, like we just stayed together. We always uh, me, Jared, Sap, uh, Woody, even Mike. We just stayed in the gym. Always stayed in the gym. Um, me and Sap hung out. Jared. You know, I mean, it was just a chemistry that that uh, made it so special because you know we can all obviously we can all play, but just us and that, that's one of the things that I see with this year team is that chemistry. They have a great chemistry together, and so the when we had that chemistry, we went a long ways because we didn't care who was killing or who was playing great. Uh, I mean, yeah, when some of us playing great, we went to them, and you know, what I mean, that was a great year for boys sports, even Iowa, Iowa football, mm-hmm. and I'm close to some of those guys too. So it was just a great year of Iowa winning. And until the end, you know, when, uh, you know, we kind of went on the, uh, on the slum at the end of the year, but I felt like if we, we might have picked a little too, too early, but it would have kept playing the same way all year. We, we would have went deep in the tournament. And, uh, but I still think it was a special year for, for us. So. Yeah, yeah, you guys got the NSA tournament and you guys played Temple right off the bat. Woodbury had that put back. Uh, yeah. I, I'm not going to say if you pushed off or not, but he, he made the right <laughs> bucket at the end. <laughs> Hey, um, yeah, the what, refs don't call it. What were you thinking, like, towards the I – mean, I remember towards the end of regulation. Uh, it was a sap that got called for the foul in the three-point shot. Yeah, oh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Where were you, what was in nah. your head at that time? Nah, so I, I didn't even get mad at Sap because I missed the free throw, and I never missed free throws. And and that's why we was up we was up by three. If I would have made my free throw, it would have went up by, uh, by four. So it wouldn't matter if we fouled him or not. So I didn't even get mad at him. I got mad at myself. And I was just like, dang, if he made both, if he made all three of them, then we're going to go to overtime. But I knew if we went to overtime, we have to win it. And uh, so uh, that's why when we, when the overtime started and the stat, I know Mike gave me that pass and I made the end when I was like, I bet I got, uh, I redeemed myself. But um, it was, it was a great game from start to finish. Uh, but, you know, we kind of, we played uh, Villanova next and you know how that went. But you know they wanted they wanted all, so we felt good. Well, I felt good. Yeah, so. that was a tough Phil Nova team that year. That was that was the best team I ever played. So yeah, oh geez, yeah, they they just couldn't mess. It's one of those games. Yeah, that was. I'm glad they won it all too, because I remember because I'm cool with Josh Hart, and I told him, "Yeah, I better win it all, man." The way I, I beat us. Was that the year that they played uh, Marcus in North Carolina? 
I think yeah. so. Yeah, I think was sure. it. I if thought that not, year they won I, like one or something in the national championship. Uh, maybe you're right, actually. Yeah, I think you were. Yeah, that was I'm trying to remember. Yeah, because Gasell was the same class as Marcus Page in them because they played. Yeah, in the yeah, same yeah, 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 yeah. They, they had a. Page I mean, they'll know had a string of good shot. teams, so I, I couldn't remember. But how would you? Uh, how would you compare that 2016 team to this year's squad? Um, I probably said this year's team was is probably deeper. Uh, yeah. Oh my gosh. Yeah. 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 They 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 deep. They have a lot of uh, offensive weapons. So I mean they, I've watched. I mean they, they always play when I'm when I'm sleeping because it's like I say we twelve seven hours ahead over here. But the, when I watch the highlights, so when I I watch I caught two games I think, and I mean they you know Luca is Luca Luca Luca's always gonna be Luca. But um, Jack Jack been playing well. You know uh, Joe Joe playing well. But you know it's gonna be tough. To, it's it's gonna be tough. I'm excited for um, Saturday matchup against Gonzaga because that's gonna show a lot. It's going to be a great matchup for both teams. And uh, I've been kind of talking a lot of shit to Nigel, uh, Nigel Williams, who's my boy for Gonzaga. <laughs> so uh, we need to win that one. So it's going to show, man. But they're they're a great team. And like I said earlier, they have a great chemistry. Uh, they love each other. They always play. Uh, they always having fun together. And they don't care who's, who's, who's killing. So. Right. Uh, we're going to get a little deeper conversation about this year's squad and later in our conversation. But we don't have- take the spin and go back. So you end your junior season coming off a of number three ranked national team. And I think you have a different uh, role coming in your senior year. You got to be the mentor of a bunch of incoming freshmen, Jordan Bohannon, Creener, uh, Tyler Cook, right? Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, obviously a tough team to get going, but you want to tell about like, tell us about that season. What was like mentoring these guys who have helped turn, turn around this Iowa program. <laughs> Man, that, that was my favorite. That was my favorite season. Uh, we didn't have a – I mean, yeah, we had a pretty good season. Uh, it wasn't what we wanted to, but that was my favorite because it really taught me how to be a, a leader. And, I, you know, I've never been in a position where I had to lead. And uh, for me to be in that, in that situation, uh, it put my leading skills in, um, into a test. And I felt like I did okay. And I remember um, Nick Nick Bear really helped me out too because he's a, he's a great leader. He took some leading class lead, uh, leaders classes. I think uh, he, he's that's one of the great the best one of the greatest leaders that I've been around. Man, uh, people sleep a lot on Nick, but he's a great leader. I learned a lot from him. But it it was fun, man. Uh, those guys they were young, but they weren't scared. Uh, it, was, it didn't matter who would who were playing, they wouldn't come out. And my favorite game was Iowa State at, at Carver. And you know they they were they were good that year. They had like four NBA players, obviously, but uh, they were good. And they came in, and I remember talking to Monte, and Monte was planning on on um, <laughs> Monte was planning on uh, leaving the shoes on the court. And he said he said after we beat y'all, I'm gonna leave my shoes and sign him and leave him on the court. And I remember telling the team, I said I told him if you're not ready to play, I'm gonna make sure a friend sit your ass down. And you better come out there and not be scared because we got to beat this muscle. Okay, excuse my language. We got to beat these dudes. So uh, that was a great game. And it showed their heart. You know, I mean, they didn't, they didn't back down from anybody. They had, uh, Iowa State had four or five seniors. And it was four, four freshmen on our team. And they didn't care, man. They just came out there and just hooped. And um, it, it was one of my, well, obviously my favorite year. So so is that where Jordan got his idea to leave the shoes on the court? <laughs> <laughs> That, I, 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 don't, I don't know. I, I don't know. But I remember Monty, I remember he talked, he was talking to me. He said he was going to leave his shoes on the court. <laughs> okay. So, uh, yeah. so I want to go back. So do you remember the uh, – I don't know if you're familiar with this. I would assume so. But Jordan Bohan has his own podcast, right? Uh, yeah, I, I saw I saw some stuff on there on social media. Yeah. Okay. So I don't know if you've listened to it all. But here's here's an episode of him and Kareen are talking about the first time they uh, met you. I'm going to play you a short clip. All right. Let me know if you can hear this. Let me know if you can hear this. Do you remember that? Okay. Do you remember the first time we saw Peter Jock? Oh my God. Do you remember that? Bro, first time we see Peter Jock. Like, we're going in to like shoot, shoot, workout. And this man, Pete, just gets done with his workout and he rolls out of the locker room, <laughs> LED lit up hoverboard, backwards cap, solid gold beats, just. Drift out to the max with the hoverboard, just zooming out of Carver up the ramps. Was like, yo, like this is really piece of shit. Like this thing. <laughs> <laughs> that was nuts, dude. I was like, I don't think this dude's ever gonna talk to us. I just we, remember we were like just trying to break the ice. Do you remember that at all? Is that true? Can you verify that? 
Yeah, yeah. I had um <laughs> yeah, I had the hoverboard. I used to I used to ride that around and uh, uh yeah, especially do practices and stuff. And yeah, that, that's a true story for sure. <laughs> that's hilarious. That sounds like the most yeah. intimidating thing ever, but uh <laughs> let the post nah, I felt I felt I felt like I wel- I felt like I welcomed them when they first got there. I mean I wasn't like really doesn't sound like it. <laughs> <laughs> there has to be a little bit of intimidation from the upperclassmen, so I think I think you did your part there. I mean, I was only I was the only fre- uh, senior, so well, me and Dale, but yeah, we had to we had to I had to be a, I was a leader, so you know, I man, I couldn't really intimidate them. I had to bring them together because we don't have a lot much time together. So it was my last year there. So all right, all yeah. right. Well, Pete, we all know how the season plays out. You guys lose a uh, TCU and NIT, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, okay yeah. uh you were first team all big 10 that season but your your senior season's not quite over yet you get invited to the ncaa three-point champ three-point dunk championship and at grand canyon which which was your birthday and i believe that you took over a snapchat during that time yeah. so yeah. which is really dope dude that was the most oh. lit crowd i've ever seen in my life that grand canyon environment you want to tell us a little about your experience there that crowd and just winning it all Oh man, yeah, like you said, bro. That's that crowd is different. Uh, it's it's like it's just like I don't know. I, I don't know how to explain it. It's, it's a small. It's the capacity is not that much, but everybody gets into it. So it was it was a great experience. Like you said, it was my birthday, and uh, when I won it, they they uh, they sung "Happy Birthday" to me. The whole crowd. So it was just a great experience. But I remember I remember we got there and we were warming up. And uh, before before it came on TV, like you know the uh, the uh, the analysis, they picked like who they probably was gonna win and stuff. And I remember walking by and I saw they didn't pick me, so I was just like, all right, bet. I was like, I told I forgot who I told, and I was like, how much you want to bet that I'm gonna win it? I'm gonna win this night. And it was like, they was like, bro, they ain't nobody pick you. And I was like, all right, say less. And then when I won it, when I won it, I went back to him. And, and uh, cause I remember, I remember they were after the first, after the first round, they were starting to pick me now. So that was my, I went in there to have fun. And then, but once I saw that, that once I talk, saw that, I took it personal. And I was just like, you know what? I'm gonna take this serious now. Cause I remember, I remember uh, Nas shooting with his, with his glasses. And I was like, all right, bro, you my mans, but I'm taking this serious now, you know yeah. what I mean? Cause I'm not here to play no more, but it was a great experience. And then the crowd got into it. Um, I ended up going to finals with uh, the guy that played there. So, you know, they were cheering for him. But after I won, you know, they started cheering for me too. And they started saying that uh, happy birthday. But I was one of the most lit crowd that I've been in, around in uh, in uh, college. Yeah, that was awesome. Uh, you were an issue that day. I remember you were a straight bucket. So I knew you were going to win too. I'm like, there's no doubt in my mind that he's going to close out in this game. Uh, I remember Naz, yeah, he had those glasses, like the camera. <laughs> yeah, I'll take it over to Snapchat too. But that was a really dope experience for all us uh, watch over. So that's awesome. Yeah, Naz, he was actually hitting shots with the glasses on. And I was there. So when the warm-ups, he was making all the shots with the glasses on. I don't know what happened when we started, but it, it was, yeah, I don't know what. All right. Uh, you want to tell us, so you've closed out your chapter career at the NCAA three-point uh, championship. You – if I'm correct, you moved the uh, get drafted or selected to go to the Suns organization, play in Northern Arizona, mm-hmm. yeah, G League, and now you're currently over in Spain, yeah, playing for who? Yeah, um, yeah. So when I went to um, when I went to got invited to training camp with the Suns, and I was actually playing really good. Uh, they were they were surprised, and uh, they they really liked me and stuff. But in the in the preseason, I hurt. I got I get hurt. I hurt my adductor. And uh, so I couldn't play. So they sent me they sent me down to the G League, and they were, and they told me to try to recover, trying to get back, get some games, and you get <clears throat> get some games in you. And uh, what's the name? They say Mike. I'm a, I don't know if y'all know Mike James, but he played. Uh, he well, he's probably the best player in Europe right now. But he um, he was on two way with the Suns, and they was gonna give him 45 days, and then if they was gonna sign him or release him. And they told me, I remember them telling me that uh, trying to get recovered, get back healthy. And and after 45 days, we'll see uh, what's going to happen with Mike James and stuff. But I ended up not playing. I ended up missing like a month or two and barely played when I got back. I remember we had like seven NBA players on the G League team. And uh, when I got back, you know, I was, I didn't really, I wasn't really myself my first year. And then I uh, came back my second year healthy. 
And I played pretty good, shot like 43% and average 14 or 15 points. <clears throat> but nothing was ringing really. So I was just like, you know what, I'm going to try uh, – I'm gonna try uh, overseas and see what happens. You know, everybody got different. Everybody got different paths. So, and uh, so I just came over here. I'm playing with uh, Mauricio in uh, Spain right now. So, uh, was injured. I've been I've been injured per, in the beginning of the season, but I'm back 100 now. So, yeah, I'm really excited to go to start getting going. And how does European basketball compared to uh, you know oh. the G League, you know NBA, college, everything? Man, it's it's tough. It's way harder than. In the states, um, for like it's 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 just tough because you no know, three seconds. It's, the rules here are just different from the states, you know. And uh, it depends what country you're in too. They have like different system, uh, different style of plays how they play. Uh, with in AC ACB is the best league in Europe, so that one I'm playing in. But it's really tough. This it reminds me of Big Ten how physical it is and how they scout so much. And uh, but the rules here are way different. You just got, you got to learn how to be consistent. And uh, uh, when you get in there, you only play like half a game. So when you get in there, you got to do as much as you can in those in those minutes that you get because everybody plays. So And why uh, is that? They they rotate differently or, or what's going on there? Yeah, they rotate. Yeah, they pretty much rotate like – it's pretty much like uh, you and uh, uh, in your position. Two guys, you know what I mean? You play half a game. Some people – it depends. Some people like play more uh, or less, you know what I mean? So – but overseas – a lot of a lot of team in your league, you you don't play as much minutes. You only play like fifteen to twenty minutes a game. Uh, you just, and you gotta you gotta be productive in those minutes. So sure. that's really tough too. And then um, the the rules that like no 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 three seconds. You know what I mean? And then like the style the style you grew up in the state playing your whole life, and then you get over here and you gotta change it. So so it's way tougher than uh than in the states. Sure. So what does the uh, what does the next few years look like? Uh, what are your aspirations and where do you think you're going from here? Ah uh, man, like I man, I don't know to be honest. Um, uh, I'm healthy now, so I'm just trying to finish the season off strong, and then uh, you know what I mean. See what goes on, what goes on next. Like I said earlier, man, I can't control what's gonna happen next. So I all I can do is control what I can do right now, and uh, just keep playing my best, keep playing, uh, try to be the best player I can be, and then my goal is to play in the the highest level of basketball I can play. In. If that's your league or NBA. Only God knows, so just got to keep working, and then that God control the rest. Right on. We're rooting for you, man. Nate, should we get into rapid fire? Uh, before we get into rapid fire, we gotta <laughs> we gotta talk about one experience we had with uh, Peter. So I think this is your senior, oh. after your senior season. Pete, you hit us up like, hey, yo, I need a flyer for my birthday. I'm like, well, we can do that. We can hit, we can hit, we can set you up. He's like, you, you should all stop by. So we had our good friend Remo. You know Remo, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Remo. Yeah. Hello, bro. Remo's like, let's go. I'm like, all right, Remo, we're gonna head down from Cedar Falls. We're gonna go to Iowa State. We're gonna go to Pete's birthday at the summer. <laughs> and we're at we're we're at the summer. We're waiting for your arrival. We all know Brad Temple over at the summit. And he cuts the music <clears throat> off. And all second, he's like, ladies and gentlemen, does this huge introduction. Uh, University of Iowa's basketball player, Peter Jock, and then you walk in with a bunch of chicks and guys, and it was just everyone's like, let's go. And I that was the dopest entrance I've ever seen, bro. You had your own entrance into a bar, and that was a. Bro, I know you're. That was a late night, bro. And I was so late, like, cause the pre the pregame that was it was crazy, and then heading there, I don't remember. I don't remember that to be honest, but I remember seeing you guys, and then we were in the section having fun, and it was too much, so I went with the DJ to hang out. But yeah. that yeah, that was a, that was a great night, and you got yeah, it was. It, I remember. I think I took a picture with your hat, right? Yeah, that's right, or, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. no, nah, that was that was crazy, dog. I, Summit, bro. That Summit, that legend, nice over there, man. <laughs> well, here's the deal. You guys are having a great time in VIP. Uh, I lived with Remo for two years. He's like, oh yeah, this will be fun. You know, you'll get to meet Peter. All this stuff. I'm like, cool. You know, I've heard about the buzz from Peter since I was in high school. I watched your uh, junior year game after our uh, quarterfinal game. You know, I've been following you through Iowa. I'm like, cool. This is gonna be a great time to go party with Peter. Nate gets in. Remo gets in. And the bouncer's like, nope, you don't get to go in. So I'm just like, all right, guys, I'll, I'll be over here. Bro, I told I, I told everybody could come in, bro. I didn't even care that night. Cause I was just like, let's all just have fun. And no, it was all good. We, we had a good time. It was fun. <laughs> there, there's always been such a fun buzz around you. It was, it was just a fun to be in the bar that night. I'm all about good vibes, bro. So I don't really care who's coming in, who's not. So it was a great night. Yes, yeah. sir. It was, a good, it was your typical summit night for sure. Yep. All right, we're, we're going to get into our segment called Rapid Fire. We're going to throw some questions at you, uh, short answers, uh, short questions. So, ready, Bryce, you can go ahead and hit with the first one. 
What was your favorite venue to play in? Does that include Iowa or? Uh, you know, go all time. I think uh, let's do let's do college for sure, though, too. Oh, shoot. Uh, favorite venue. I'll probably say either Michigan State or Michigan State or Iowa State. Hilton's crazy environment. Yeah. Pretty sure that's what uh, J-Bo said, too. He, he said the, the is zone can get crazy. Yeah, <laughs> for sure. All right. Uh, what was your biggest shot in your career that you remember at Iowa or your favorite shot that you hit? At Iowa? Yeah. I'd probably say at uh, Florida State when we played Florida, Florida State. Uh, the AC, uh, ACC uh, Big Ten Challenge. Yep. Yeah, when I hit that three in the corner. That's probably that was awesome. Saying. I was just watching yeah. that actually right before you hopped on, so that's cool that you said that. <laughs> this is a fan question. Do you think that Luca Garza is the greatest hawk of all time? Ooh. <laughs> Dang. Me, person- me personally, I think Roy Devin Marble is the greatest of all time, but I feel like uh, once Luca is done with, Col- with Iowa – you know, you know that'd be a that'd be a great debate, and yeah, I'll probably give it to ah uh, yeah I'll probably give it to Luca man, I, he a dog, That's my hard, little to, hard not to, yeah, you guys a bucket. Similar to the favorite <laughs> shot, what was your favorite game to play in? Favorite play the game, I mean favorite game to play in. I always like playing at the Iowa State games, and um, yeah, I like I like playing the Iowa State games for sure, and then Purdue games too. I don't know why. <laughs> Mackey Arena is a tough place to win at. Oh yeah, it's definitely. And that's the one. The one when they're up by like twenty, we came back. I think it was my junior year that yep. year we talked about earlier. That was that was one of the, the, my favorite games of all time. Yeah, it's Swan again, and then that a pretty tall lineup. Yeah, that full team. Yeah, that was, it was a great team. All right, Pete. Here's a here's a great question here. So, if you had to create a starting lineup of all the Iowa players that you played with, <laughs> who would the starting five be? <laughs> the- Yo. We're gonna not send including, each one not, of these not, guys. We're gonna send them a clip too. If, if you don't keep them, if you don't put them in the lineup, not including me, or is that including me? <laughs> you can include you. Oh yeah, I think you have to. Yeah. Hey man, that's tough. Um. Hey bro, let, hey let me skip that because all my boys. Gonna be yep. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not even going. I'm not ready to answer that yet. Once I retire playing basketball, and then I'll answer that question. All right, we'll get back to you on that one. All right, last rapid fire question. Unless Bryce, you have another one after this one. What was your favorite place to eat at in Iowa City? Ooh, my favorite place was Monica. Monica's, and um, what's that burger? What that burger That's spot? Uh, Monica's. You know Monica's. Like I, uh, I think Spencer yeah. just said that last week. Yeah, yeah. We were, we just did an interview with wrestler Spencer Lee. He said Monica's too. Spencer, my guy. Tell him I said what's up. We but uh, t- uh, what's the name? Uh, Sp- uh, yeah, Monica's in uh, where's that space right by uh, by uh, uh, by the football field? Yep, I knew you were gonna the, say that. The, the burger you, spot, the one that you like. Stella's, is it Stella's? Stella's, yes, yeah, sir. Yeah. That's it's Monica's and Stella's. Stella's my go to out there. Uh, yeah, but Monica's my favorite. Dang, I gotta try Monica's. Oh, that's too yeah, oh yeah, you got you gotta go there, bro. He's favorite place. All right, Peter, we, we got to say thank you to Cookies Barbecue for sponsoring the podcast. And we've got the Cookies Saucy question of the week. Two this LeBron, week. Oh, yeah, we got two. LeBron James or Michael Jordan? LeBron James. That's my guy. I knew you were intelligent. <laughs> oh. Nate, Nate gets uh, in a, an argument every single week about who's the best of all time. And, you know, it's slowly – it's hard to look past LeBron nowadays, but I, I always put in a, a good word for Michael Jordan. Well, like LeBron is the greatest player of all time. You can say Michael Jordan is the goat for what he was or who he is, because he, you know, I mean, he was bigger than life, just like uh, Michael Jackson. But if we talk about basketball, LeBron is the greatest player of all time because he can play all positions and he can do most, everything. He can do everything, you know what I mean? So that's why I say LeBron James. But it's like you say goat, it. You can say you can say MJ for what he did off the court too, you know what I mean, and everything. But if you're talking about basketball, one-on-one player, I'm going with my uh, LeBron James. Fair enough. And number two, who would win in a three-point contest, you or j Me. <laughs> that was Come the on. quickest two answers, right? Yes. You don't even give him a shot? I'm not nobody. I'm not, I'm not going to say – I'm not letting anybody. Like, I don't care who I go against. I'm always going to pick me. Love it. The only Love person I wouldn't pick against – the only person I'll pick against me is God. They see. <laughs> there you go. All right. 
Uh, Pete, before we let you go, we got to ask you about this year's expectations for this Iowa squad. What, what's your thoughts on them? How far do you think they can go? Personally, I think if they stay together and they keep playing uh, the way they are and uh, with the chemistry, I feel like they can win national, uh, national. I mean, in, uh, final four. And this, this, uh, this Saturday is going to show a lot. But if they can, if they can beat Gonzaga, I mean, sky's the limit for them. Because I, I even feel like they haven't really played their best games yet because some of the guys, you know what I mean, like they haven't been playing their best They're just games. getting warmed up. Exactly. So once once they fully click and reach their full potential, which is scary because they're already playing great. So they, will, I think they're going to win Big Ten and at least go to Final Four. I'm going I'm to stay Final Four. And then anything can happen to Final Four. Depends Obviously, on last year got cut short, and they were projecting that maybe even 10 teams from the Big Ten would make the tournament. Uh, how would you mm-hmm. compare the Big Ten this year to when you would have played uh, 16, 17? Uh, to be honest, I haven't really been watching Big Ten as a whole. I, I've, been, I've been just watching Iowa, so I really couldn't tell you. Um, yeah, I don't really have any information about sure. how big – I mean, how are they this year? I have no idea, to be honest. Got I know it. they have. My cousin, my cousin played – two of my cousins, one of my cousins played for Minnesota. So I said Minnesota, oh, and then my, my, my other cousin played for um, uh, Maryland. Sure. So those Iowa, Minnesota, Maryland are the only three teams that I've been really watching. But, yeah, I don't really know much. Yeah, fair enough. Yeah, they're yeah. Uh Well, Pete, many people know you as a great basketball player and Iowa legend. But personally, I want to thank you. Ever, ever since we've been in contact, you've been nothing but a great human being towards us. Uh, I remember I – politely asked you for you to sign a happy birthday wish to my nephew you said no problem you took a video said happy birthday uh you didn't have to do that for me but you did and that just goes to show how great of a guy you are and we know you got a busy schedule a busy life a lot of people are hitting you up so we appreciate you man uh if there's anything that we could do for you in the future uh you just hit us up and we would love to help you out yeah it's all love bro appreciate you guys having me on the podcast um say what's up to everybody there is Remo with y'all He's over. He was in Des Moines last week, and we tried to link up, but you know how he is. Man, Remo been all over the America, bro. I don't yep. know what he's doing, bro. He's just but doing yeah, Remo bro, stuff. Appreciate, yeah, appreciate you guys, man. Thanks for having me on the podcast, and it's all blessing and love, man. All God right. bless. Yeah, yeah, back thanks for having me, Peter. Take care, right. and uh, good luck this season, and happy holidays as well. Yeah, you too, bro. Yes, sir. Talk to you soon. Nate, we got to finish off this episode. It was awesome talking to Peter. Uh, that guy is awesome. Uh, you have a few more things that we got to run over though. Um, if it doesn't come up, I need to have a special segment for die hard and Christmas movie conversation. That is something that I feel very passionate about and I really want to clear up the air. I figured that was going to come in the topic. Uh, you, are you uh, planning a Christmas draft that we, we go through? Like we're going to, yeah, yeah, yeah. So we got a big Christmas draft. We're going to pick a top five. That. It'll be a top five between you and I. Okay. Uh, and then we'll post to social media to see who wins this uh, year's Christmas draft. So this year's Christmas draft will be best Christmas holiday movies. So if you pick one, that that movie is eliminated from the board, basically just like an NBA or NFL draft. Okay. You got the board ready? Those are the rules. Uh, yeah. I'm. You want to do the draft right now? Let's do the draft. Okay, folks. Before we hop into the draft, Bryce, I got to feed you some three quick holiday facts that might get okay. your holiday spirits going real quick. Absolutely. Number one, Jingle Bells was the first song played in space. Really? Does that surprise you? Yeah. Because <laughs> wasn't that in what? July? I'm not sure when. I'm not sure when this took place, but all I know is that Jingle Bells was the first song played in space. Love it. Yeah, very interesting. All right, there is a Christmas tree in fact number two. There's a Christmas tree in Spain worth 15 million dollars. Uh, is it made of solid gold? What, what makes you. a tree that expensive? I th- no idea. Has it been like? Is it old? Is it a relic at this point? Couldn't tell you. I just, just know fast just, fact. Okay. I just know that yeah, fast fact there's a tree worth 15 million dollars in Spain. Fair enough. Final fact today for Christmas, each American anticipates spending about $850 on gifts, but they usually end up spending $1500. Can yep. you relate to that? I can absolutely relate to it. I was going to ask how much you've spent on Christmas gifts so far this I, year. I I anticipated it to spend about ooh, maybe $350. I probably spent about 600. Yep. Yeah, I'd say that's probably where I am. Like, I'd say if I was going above and beyond, I I probably could get to that level. But at the end of the day, it's like I I got New Year's to save up for. Mom and dad, you might have to take the shaft on this one. Yeah, no kidding. Uh, Well, maybe maybe in the future we'll reach up to the average American. But no, uh, the stat 
is relative to me just because I always am spending more than what I anticipate. Absolutely. Got, you got, always go more. And I'm still not done spending. I know I, I just feel like I shop for one person, I'm like, oh crap, I forgot about this person. Now I gotta go shop for that person. I did good this year. I actually did a lot of it beforehand, but then it gets closer and closer. Like, ah, maybe I could do a little bit more. Why it's not, tough. right? It's tough. Yeah, we're all right. We're, let's we get might get to draft. that 600. Yes. All oh, right. Let's get good. into this draft. Bryce, I'm going to go ahead and give you the first pick of the draft. Okay. I'm going to take uh, Home Alone. I will have to take that off my list. That's a solid first pick. All right. Number one's off the board. My number one will be Christmas Vacation. That is my favorite so, Christmas movie. National Lampoon's Christmas Vacation. Clark is just unbelievable. I've already watched it a hundred times. I yep. feel like this Christmas, it gets better almost every time I watch it. Okay, so now I have the second pick, and then you, and then you'll have the third pick. So we're snaking. That makes sense. Yeah, we'll go in that order. Okay. Okay. All right. My number two. Elf. That's that's two solid ones. Those are probably my two favorites right off the bat. Bryce, I feel like I might win this draft after these first two picks. Yep. Yep, you caught me off guard right away. All right, hit me if you're second. A Christmas Story. Oh, like Scrooge? Is that I, which which one's a Christmas Story? Uh, that, that's the one with Ralphie. I like the one with Ralphie. Whatever that Who's one. Ralphie. Is. I don't know. I, you're gonna shoot your eye out, kid. It's it's that it's that story. I don't think I I don't think I know it. That would be a one. I've heard of a Christmas list. Story. Yep. Uh, what is the other one? What's the Scrooge one called? I thought it was the a Christmas story. Ghosts. Yeah, I Here. thought it was a Christmas story. Let's look it up. We got Google nowadays. We can do that. Okay, part. that's true. I mean, you might have to put this on your list to watch in the next few days. A Christmas Carol. Christmas Carol. A Christmas Carol is the one with Scrooge. A Christmas story is Ralphie, uh, a bunch of funny. He's just a funny little kid. He's got glasses. Uh, his mom dresses him up too bundled up for Christmas. He sticks his tongue on a pole and gets it stuck. He shoots his eye out with a BB gun. Uh, he says a bad word and has to wash his mouth out with soap. It's a Christmas classic. Okay, sounds like I need to get on that. Yep. You're back at number three now. Back at number three. Uh, I'm going to take the original Rudolph Claymation. <sighs> the Claymation's unbelievable. Mm -hmm. it's, so, it's so <laughs> that was easy. That was easy. My favorite movie growing up. Mm -hmm. That's a Not nostalgic to, one. Yes, but that's that's a classic with the, the I love him the with the hiker guy whoever always looks his little. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, that's all. That's great. Yukon Cornelius. Mm -hmm. Is that <laughs> the fact that you remember that's impressive? Great movie. That's a solid three right there. All right, I'm going to turn mine into a no, wait, wait. Before it gets to comedy, my number three is The Grinch. Okay, we we posted this on the uh, Twitter the other day, and we got a lot of crap for the Jim Carrey Grinch, which I also put up there in my top five, maybe. People are hating on the Grinch. People are hating on the Grinch pretty hard. Um, let's see here. Yeah, yeah. Look, these comments are nuts. I personally hate Jim Carrey. The Grinch sucks. That's that's the first comment on there. The hell? Yeah, I, I didn't. I was surprised. I didn't know there was so much Jim uh, Carrey hate. There is. So are, hmm. are you back up? You got? Yeah, I'm back four. up. But damn, I was feeling really solid about my draft. Now to hear the pessimistic reviews on well Grinch. you got, you got like, a thumbs up for me i just don't know if you got it from the general public well, that kind of scares me okay number four bad santa with billy bob thornton colby's never seen it my brother's never seen it yeah get the culpster to watch it that's one of those that you might have watched a little too early on and you're like holy cow this is really inappropriate oh yeah yeah Very it definitely gets, it gets a lot better as the sooner you get older have you seen the second one bad santa too yeah Yep. Yeah. Okay. I think that one's good too. I haven't seen that. Yeah. I've only seen that one once, but I've seen the first one plenty of times. Well, this is a question I have for you. We were debating whether or not the second movie in the Christmas series counts. Like if, can we, can we put two, like if I'm going to do a little spoiler, my next choice is the Santa Claus, uh, but the Santa Claus two is also very good. So we were debating on, on that top 10 list that we put out about a week ago, whether or not you could put the second, the sequel on there as, as the, uh, the top choice and i don't know In, unless it's better i don't think you can that's tough so w what's your thoughts on home alone which one's better my roommate ben loves home alone too he likes donald trump big trumpy yeah. um so he likes home alone too i like home alone one i like home alone too <sighs> see that it's, it's a real debate okay okay the twos are hard because the santa claus two is really good too I think the Santa Claus, the first one was my favorite one. 
Mm-hmm. I'm, I'm always an original well, Tim kind of Allen. guy. Love Tim Allen. Mm-hmm. I can't believe I forgot about the Santa Claus. I didn't put them in my draft. All right, so we have our top four, the final round, your pick. Okay. Um, I'm not going to go nostalgic. I'm not going to say It's a Wonderful Life. I'm not going to say Polar Express. Um, I'm going to say, personally, another animation, Frosty the Snowman. It did not make the Iowa Chill top 10, but it's a personal favorite. Yep, Frosty's great. My, my mom's favorite movie. Other really? than it's at least her second but the other one I'm going to say here for my fifth one, I was going to select the Polar Express. I know the Polar Express is not a crowd favorite, but I personally love the Polar Express. Uh, that does not crack my top five. However, the Charlie Brown Christmas. Hell yeah. I love Charlie pick. Brown Christmas. You can't beat Snoopy. You can't beat Charlie Brown. You can't beat all the shenanigans. Those kids are always putting up the Charlie Brown pumpkin patch, uh, Halloween, Thanksgiving, and especially the Christmas Love the Charlie Brown classics. They're great. My mom's yep. easy favorite one, too, is that and Frosty. Yep. Every holiday, I can get behind the Charlie Browns. I think that's a solid draft. I, are we going to put this out for the people to decide who had the better draft? We're going to have to. Okay. Yep. That's fair. Uh, it's it's up there. I, I was feeling good about my draft until you said the Grinch, and then that kind of rung a bell. I, I did. Now I do kind of remember people hating on Grinch and Jim Carrey. I was a little surprised. Uh, and, that, and that brings me into my next point. I, I didn't know that people hated Jim Carrey and the Grinch so much, but I I definitely didn't realize how much people are diehards for Die Hard as a Christmas movie. Yes, so get into this. I know this so, has been a hot topic over Chris every single Christmas. For for consecutive Christmases, we put out this list, and this is a always a hot button issue. I personally don't think that Die Hard qualifies as a Christmas movie because it happens to take place on Christmas, but nothing about the story revolves around it being Christmas. From my understanding, yes. Oh, okay. Here's my point. I never watched it, so I think if I've never watched it, no one's really harassed me to watch it. Every other Christmas movie, someone's harassed me. Hey, you got to watch this watch Christmas it. movie. No one's ever harassed me to watch Die Hard. But as soon as we don't talk about Die Hard, someone's like, what the hell? You guys didn't put Die Hard on your list. Easily the no most one in my personal, thing. No one in my personal friendship or family has watched Die Hard. Your family has not either. No, no, I don't gotcha. think they've even heard of Die Hard. So because we got so much crap for it two years, three years in a row now, I finally watched it last year and I really liked the movie. It does not constitute as a Christmas movie. And that's my final answer. That's a hot take. We're going to yep. put this clip on social media and let mm-hmm. you be fumed up by the general public. It's, it's going to raise some hairs for sure, but I, I, I stand by it. I don't think, I think it needs to be at least a 50 or more percent about the story being Christmas related. Otherwise it doesn't count. I would agree. Just because, we'll it happens, just because it happens during Christmas time doesn't necessarily make it a Christmas movie. Right. From the power of the Iowa Chill Show, we declare that the official rule. That's the official rule. All right. Well, should we get into this recap of this weekend's games? Yep. Yep. I was hoping we'd have a little bit more positive news to share from this past weekend, but um, that's it's also why we're recording today because we wanted to talk about all those uh, the Big 12 championship and then Iowa versus Gonzaga, one versus three. I was hoping for a little bit more positive news to share, but what were your feedback? I mean, there's a lot of negativity that we could make about the weekend, but what are some positives that you took away from the weekend from both games? Uh, the positives are that we're lucky to be in the position. You know, we could be a terrible team. I mean, both standpoint, Iowa State couldn't be playing for the Big 12 championship. They could be playing for Paul Rhodes and the terrible Cyclones back in 2014 era. Iowa could be back in the Todd Lickletter era playing against Cop and State and losing. So we should be... We should not take for granted. I mean, these losses hurt, but it's a good hurt, you know. Mm-hmm. Understand the, the current success we're having and just enjoy the moment moving forward. So yeah. that's my initial positive thought. On you bet. And I know your brother has always said this, but in a state of three million, it's tough to have two competitive programs that compete at a high level. And I think that's that's something to be proud about. I know you posted about that this weekend, and I think that's one of the best takes takeaways from the weekend is that we have two competitive teams. We get a lot of quality games to watch. Like that's a that's something to be thankful for for sure. You know, I if I'm going to answer my own question here, I think if there's one thing to be uh, taken away is that neither team quit. Iowa State was down 24 to seven at one point, comes back and makes it a, a one touchdown game to be competitive at the end. Iowa looks pretty much outmatched the whole game they they were not hitting their three pointers they were getting out rebounded they missed a lot of free throws things that are uncommon for us but we stayed in the game to the point where it was never a blowout and i think that's something to be proud about as well and excited for the rest of the season 
Yeah, I would agree. Uh, getting recapping the Iowa game real quick. Uh, first eight minutes were kind of a back and forth between uh, the other two teams. And then at that, after that eight minute stretch, you can just tell Gonzaga was clearly the more athletic team. Oh my goodness. More speed, yeah. better perimeter, quicker guards. And usually, on, I think almost any other night, Iowa could compete with them. I was just cold from three. You hit, they hit four threes, three or four. I think all of those came from Wieskamp. Mm-hmm. And he was on fire. If we, I mean, if we buy at least three or four more threes throughout the entire game. That leaves us in a whole different situation. You can't afford to get down early against Gonzaga. They're clearly the number one team in the nation for a reason. Jalen Suggs is just an absolute, absolute stud. I mean, he, I think he went eight of 10 from three point that night. Uh, Gonzaga averages five, three made th- five, three point baskets made a game. They had 10 in the first half. Yeah. They couldn't know. So it's just one of those days that it was Gonzaga's night. It was not <laughs> Iowa's night. And we still held on throughout the second half. They could have easily hung up. Let Gonzaga run away with a 25 point victory. Iowa cut up to maybe seven or eight, had a few chances to cut down to four or five. Just wasn't our, our night. So I think we should be okay moving forward. They shouldn't bite us in the butt too much. Iowa only did move the number four. So they went from number three to number four in the rankings. That's solid. I think that's I think that's fair. I mean, for how badly we played, we really hung in there. And it shows that there's gonna be nights where we're gonna take take down the top teams. Um but going forward, we got Iowa State in the Fiesta Bowl just announced today. We've got Iowa in the Music City Bowl against Missouri. Um, Iowa basketball starts the Big Ten gauntlet. Uh, what are your predictions for everything moving forward? And, and not to mention Iowa women's basketball is also playing at a top level as well. Yeah, uh, uh, Clayton Clark, absolute stud. Getting to the Iowa State and the Fiesta Bowl. So Iowa State's playing number 25, Oregon. Iowa State kind of lucked out with this draw. This could be Iowa State's chance to win, walk away with the Fiesta Bowl because the, the Fiesta Bowl deals with Iowa State versus the Pac-12 winner or the Pac-12, I don't know what to call it anymore, but it was supposed to be USC versus another team. And that team had a withdrawal from the PAC 12 PAC 10 championship because of COVID reasons. So Oregon really? got put into that. So Oregon, that's from my understanding. So Oregon got put into that spot versus USC and then they upset USC. So therefore Oregon will play for the PAC 12 versus Iowa State and the Fiesta Bowl. So I think gotcha. heavy, heavily, I don't know. I mean, Oregon's just a completely different team versus any other team that, Almost you could play in the entire nation, not just the Big 12 alone, but they're just widespread, athletic, fast uh, scoring game. I think that'll be so. But I do like Iowa State in that. I do too. I like I like Iowa State's team. I think they have some awesome fire firepower and they're playing really good defense. Um, the one knock I think is that they don't play in a conference that's respected as much as they were in a decade ago. But I like them. I think that they have as much of a competitive shot as anybody in the Big 12. Yeah, uh, they jumped down, was it 17-0 early against Oklahoma? We talked about the resilience of coming back. Uh, it's That's hard for, especially in a championship game, being down early. And then they come back with a chance to win it in the end, only down by six through picking the end zone. Did you see that? <laughs> Did you see Matt Campbell's reaction to that? Yeah. Offsides in that call? Yeah, he was going crazy. Passionate coach. Uh, passionate. I, I, I'm, Fran- a, I'm a big fan of Campbell for sure. What, but what, you, what was the tweet? It was like he's passionate, but Fran McCaffrey's psychotic or something along those oh, lines. Oh yeah, I saw that. It's kind of comparing the two to each other. Yeah, I, we, we I think we cleared the air with Jock today, so we're fine. Uh, Fran's red face is not permanent. Right. He's a good man. And then Iowa will be in the Music City Bowl, which I would, if I ever become the president, I will destroy the Music yep. City Bowl. One of the all time worst first bowls. obligation. Nobody. It's it's a bowl Missouri. game. I, I almost don't even want to tune in. I will, but I don't want to. Right. And, and what is what's Missouri's story? I don't know. I don't know nothing about Missouri. Yeah, let's see. There's nothing to get excited about there. And I think we have a team that hate to hate knock on Petrus, but I think if if there's a quarterback that's making plays, not throwing the ball away so much, that's a maybe a nine win team. Right. I would have loved to see us compete in the Big Ten championship. I still think Ohio State wins by maybe. 10 17 uh justin fields had a terrible game against northwestern and i was defense is i feel like a lot better than northwestern so we just had a slow start to the year kind of got things rolling but so be it i will we'll play in a bowl game we'll have a chance i think four in a row if they win this bowl game and then if iowa state wins this will be the first new year's eve bowl victory in the entire franchise if i say i think this might be the first appearance i think it's the first appearance too so okay well there you go so yeah still big um a lot of things to look forward to. As you said, Iowa basketball will start the gauntlet here. Iowa State has tried – they have to try to figure something out in basketball. They had a close game against number eight, West Virginia, last week. Uh, came down to the wire. I think West Virginia escaped with about a four or five-point victory. So that's a science of positive things kind of moving forward for the cycle in basketball. 
few athletes on the team. No one just knows the role. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It seems like some rebuilding going on over Hilton. But um, lots to look forward to. So, uh, what, what can we look forward to from the show? Chill show? The chill show. Okay. I know we have a few. We have about three guests lined up. In, uh, waiting, on, waiting on the confirmation for Garza. So I got waiting another on... email today. Oh, yeah. What, what is that? He's a busy man. He said this Monday might not work, but I don't want to get people's hopes up, but maybe next Monday. So we might have okay. next week episode right okay. to yeah, run I can off only... the year. Speaking of Garza, yeah, the Iowa had an off day, but Garza put up his casual 30-10 against them. Uh, this is what you expect out of the man. The man, the man oh, wakes man. up before he even gets out of bed. He has a 30 and 10, 30 yep. on the stat sheet. So that'd be cool if we can land him. I understand he's probably a very busy boy, but we're going to get things rolling off here in the new year. Hopefully 2021 is nothing like 2020. And <laughs> a lot of what a fucking year, man. Yeah, this right. has been something else. I saw that uh, – somebody was posting about Illinois volcanoes and or Ohio vo volcanoes and Illinois sinkholes or something like that. I hope, hope some random uh, disasters don't start happening in the Midwest. Oh, Jesus. I can only imagine, but it won't surprise me. You know, at this moment, it's like, whatever, what else was the I mean, 2020 finale? Yep. If, if Iowa got a hurricane right now, I'd be like, yeah, that makes sense. Yep. Cool. Well, let's, uh, let's wrap this thing up and, and get it posted and like, share, subscribe, follow. Everything you watch on YouTube, we got our faces now.